All oh, right, all right, all right. What the heck's going on, everybody? We got ourselves a big series. It's a best of three, straight out of the group stage. Akatavitsa, the group of death. Maru in the top right, going for a low ground barracks. And Rainer in the bottom left side, going for what appears to be a hatchery first on 16. So it looks like it's probably going to be a hatchery gas pool up against a gasless expand. Okay, so Maru is going to deny... The Overlord with Marines. Unluckily for him, Rainer is scouting everywhere for sneaky proxies because he knows Maru likes to try to cheese and throw out very aggressive builds early on. Command Center starts immediately at a minute and 15 seconds. They did have to do a little bit of a pause there. Rainer apparently letting them know, hey, the white noise is not very loud. I can potentially hear the commentary. So he did get a pause going and they did resume. Now, long distance mining is less efficient than just mining off these patches. But uh, don't tell that to pro gamers, guys. I swear, I don't know. I don't know how this went. Yeah, I don't know if the mineral patches are just better now. I really need to do an exhaustive test because pretty much every pro rallies to the natural these days once they're on 16 on minerals. Even though you're meant to get about 50 to 70% efficiency off extra workers mining. It's kind of crazy. Third command center, guys. It's going to be a gasless three command center build. This is as greedy as it gets. This is ridiculous. So Maru is basically just saying, hey, we're starting on Alcyon. I'm just going to play the greediest build you've ever seen. And unfortunately for Rainer, he's playing so cautious. I mean, actually, fortunately, he doesn't lose any overlords. And he does build four Zerglings, which he doesn't really need. He's going to send one across and try to scout what's up. But yeah, Maru is really hiding what he's up to. Here's the thing. If Rainer gambles and plays greedy, he's in a great spot. But if he tries to play safe here, he's going to be like, what is this? Why are you denying scouting? What's going on? He might freak out a little bit. And if he can't get a Zergling in or get this Overlord in on that right side, I'd like to see him move this Overlord down into the right to try to get into the main. Um, He's just going to be completely in the dark and he might start making Ling Bane thinking it's a three Rex when it's not. He sees no add-on. No add-on is huge. There's two things you can read from that. Number one, your opponent's played gasless. Or number two, your opponent's doing a crazy all-in. I would say gasless has to be the read, though, because this is clearly your first barracks. Why would you not have an add-on on your first barracks? Because you don't have any add-ons. But Rainer is panicking, thinking, oh, you're coming across the map with marines off barracks. Oh, holy crap, is this an all-in? So, so Rainer thinks he's being all-in right now. He builds eight zerglings reactively, ten zerglings even. And another Zergling Scout gets tonight. So now he needs to go back to droning, which he does start doing. But even, even any investment in link speed, in drones, in, any of the, in Zerglings, is a waste of money right now. And it's really hurting him. Another Zergling just died on the right side. He keeps sending these links in. He should try to surround these Marines. Finally, he sees a factory and a reactor going down. And he's going to be like, what the hell is going on with this build order? We can see it's mech. That is a three factory opening. So he's going to go battle mech, Cyclone, Hellion, off of a super greedy start. But now there's not enough lings to beat the Marines. So Rainer's already lost six Zerglings. He's built 12 in total. He's only up four workers in this game. Now, you need to pretty much play Roaches and Infestors, I would say, to get the most efficient composition against Cyclone, Hellion. The problem is that until you ha unless they're all morphed into Ravages or until you have Roach Speed, Roaches can just get kited by the uh, Hurricane Thrusters Cyclones very easily. But if you play like Mass Zergling Baneling, normally good versus... Wait, he's making Stim. Oh, he's faking out Stim. He's faking a Bio style. Oh, Maru's playing such a tricky game one. This is so smart. Overlord tries to come in from the right. Marines are like, nope. Oh, if he sees the factory though. If he sees the factory. Oh, no, he doesn't see it. Oh no, Maru is on point. That spotting depot seeing the Overlord is epic. There's no Roach Horn. There's no Baneling Nest. Okay, Baneling Nest is going to go down now. That'll help. But look at this. I love this move for Maru. Maru is realizing I've tricked you into thinking I'm playing Bio. You're going to play Ling Bane. Hurricane Thrusters is nice, but Blue Flame is even more important. Now he does see the Cyclone coming out. Does Rainer realize that that Barracks was no longer upgrading, that this is a fake out? If he does... I imagine he'd go for a Roach Horn to round out this style because a quick Roach Speed is pretty much necessary. Technically, you can defend with Hydras or, or even Pure and Zergling and Baneling, but those armies are so much more fragile. Remember, the Cyclone does bonus damage 
to mechanical units. No Zerg units are mechanical. Roaches have 145 hit points. They can tank like crazy. Double Evo Chamber going down, making me think Rainer doesn't realize what's happening. I think he thinks this is a light Cyclone Hellion pressure with Stim Marines. He comes in with another guy, and once again, he restarts Stim, pretending he's, he's making combat shields. Oh, he's doing such a good job of faking him out. Maru with the mind games. And Rainer has no idea. He's making Baneling speed. He's about to make melee carapace upgrades. He's on Queenling Bane, thinking he's playing against Bio. He now sees a ton of Cyclones, and it has to dawn on him what's happening. This is Mech, but still no Roach Warren, no Hydra Den. He's in a desperate position right now. Rainer on the defense. He goes for a giant Ling run by. The Cyclones are there, though. These Cyclones on the front doing good damage as well. The Marines starting to wear through these Queens. Banelings trying to get on top. They will finally get there. Lings are inside the main base. They're derping out behind the mineral line, though. Rainer, so much pressure on him at home that he doesn't have anything on the front. The Cyclones are starting to fall. He only gets five SCVs with this Ling run by. He does kill both SCVs, but in the armories, which is something. Only one Cyclone remaining. Great Queen Micro so far for Rainer. He does defend at home. And that's a very important first hold. However, fourth command center is building. You can see that's already halfway on the way. And he's on those five factories pumping Cyclone Heli. And Hydrogen only now going down. Rainer is trying to defend with Queen Link Bane. Rainer famously said that he can beat... That mech is so bad, he can beat it with Ling Bane Muta every game. Even when his opponent knows he's playing Muta Ling Bane. I think it was Rotterdam ended up casting that match. They put up money and Marine Lord played against him and Marine Lord 3 0 would him in some of the most one-sided games we've ever seen. And Rainer was like, oh, okay. Maybe it was 3-1. Maybe Rainer won one game, actually. But it was pretty damn dominant. And uh, this is obviously many years ago, a younger Rainer, a less dominant Rainer. But if the mech player knows you're just massing Ling Bane, they will not let you surround and hit those Banelings in the middle of them. Ooh, speak of the devil. Oh, gosh. Oh, gosh. Good Zergling wrap around. Nice Zergling wrap around for Rainer. That's the surround that he needed. And he finally shuts down Maru's push. But the reinforcement is here, not too far behind. Remember, he's got Blue Flame. No Hurricane Thrusters just yet. But the 1 1 upgrade's about halfway done. 1 1 range and Carapace on the way for Rainer. Oh, big Hellion splashies. Ling Bane going after these Cyclones. Gets a few decent hits, but the Cyclone number's out of control, man. 11 Hydra's building. He's trying to make Augments. That is the movement speed upgrade rather than the range. Does take a little longer to complete. Hydra's can trade okay against Cyclone Hellion. Remember those Cyclones have 20 more hit points. And slightly higher DPS. Ooh. That fifth base has to get cancelled on the Rich Gas. Trying to respread Creep. This Creep has been severely diminished. Rainer needs to spread that Creep on the right as well. He's going to reclaim the Watchtower. It seems like he might have weathered the storm. Fourth command center is up though, fully saturated. Fifth command center building. Ooh, this thing run by is not going to find too much when your opponent's building out of seven factories, soon to be eight factories at a time. They almost always have units at home ready to respond. Only two SCVs for all those Zerglings. And rainer has got to be very careful because he's down uh, quite a bit in the economy. He has more army supply, interestingly enough. But not many Banelings right now, mostly Hydra Zergling and Blue Flame frightening against an entirely light army he's coming around with a wraparound from the top he's trying to set that up but the hydra flank on the south is not well reinforced links on the top right hydra's moving in nice stutter step for rainer trying to trap these cyclones he gets some of them but maru slips away from the worst part of the surround and he once again averts disaster units lost tab a thousand resources in favor of maru maru has a fifth command sensor finish behind this he's now swapping into siege tanks he says, I've done enough with Battle Mech. It's time to swap into Trad Mech. Oh, Maru gets caught out. Three Cyclones and a bunch of aliens go down. Rainer with some Chris Micro so far. Maru has a giant economy. He's got eight factories behind this. And his production is absolutely bananas. But he's forced to pull back. And this gives Rainer the time he needs. Infestation Pit, 2-2 two, two upgrades on the way. And notice he's going Carapace, not Melee. What's changed, guys? Cyclones. Cyclones uh, attack is affected by armor now. So you need armor, otherwise those plus three cyclones will will, my, will will melt your army. Because there's going to be a point where you want to reinforce with fast mobile units. You'll see Maru, once he gets to 10 or 12 siege tanks, swap back into mass cyclone. And those cyclones are very good with their attack upgrades. Hydraling Bane forward on the map. Rainer needs to focus on his creep spread more. He hasn't been spreading it quite as constantly as he could. And that's because the pressure Maru is mounting on him, it's not easy 
to spread that. He's trying to get a bit more control out of the map. He doesn't have any Banelings. Oh, no, no, no. Rainer, he's too far out on the map. He thought he was the daddy. He thought he was in charge of this game. But Maru, oh my god, with a mass Hellion reinforce, just roasts the core of Rainer's army. That was a, a huge misstep. Rainer had managed to rally from a terrible start, but he didn't have any Link Bane support there. He didn't have enough numbers, and he lets himself get caught out. You need Banelings to deal with the Hellions so that your Hydras can deal with everything else. But in that case, the Hellions rinsed his Hydras off the map. Barely going to hold, though, by the looks of it. There is a big tank layer going backwards. More Hellions and tanks rallying in. 2-2 two, two upgrades are not quite done for either side. They're finishing for both sides right as we speak. Rainer going to take out that tank, but he's losing so many Hydras to do this. The unit's lost tab is now 2,000 resources in favor of Maru. And that is absolutely massive. Hellion tank moving forward. Overlord trying to take a dump on the left side of the map. That planetary is already up. Five bases with more command centers on the way. Rainer needs to break this push right now. These tanks are getting too much value. He needs to break it, but there's too many Hellions getting into the action. And that might just be the winning fight for Maru. Because now Rainer, what's he got? A few Hydras, a few Lings, no splash damage to deal with the Hellbat and Hellion reinforce. Maru rallying mech like a madman. 3-3 three, three upgrades are on the way. Mass tank rally forwards. The Ling Hydra coming out. Maru's mech standing strong in the line of Zerg fire. And there is just not enough Zerg left to hold on. If he loses this base, he loses the bottom right as well. Rainer is not willing to make that concession. His Hydras move up, but they do not have an angle. And they do definitely not have the numbers. Six drones go down on the retreat. Viper does get out of there. We'll be able to start gathering energy off that hive. But his income is now getting hurt as well. Maru on 93 workers has an unlimited amount of money coming in behind this. Hydras take out the front line of Hellbat Cyclone, but the tanks start to shell on them and he's forced back. Maru encroaching on his territory in the bottom right. Cyclone's taking out that hatchery. Viper's coming forward. He's going to abduct a single tank, but there are so many more where that came from. Siege tank's inching forward. He's going to try and maintain his spread as these Vipers do come forward. Gotta watch out. A duck's coming in. Oh, he only has one abduct on those Vipers. One of the Vipers goes down. Hydras are trapped. Rainer trying to defend with the power of abducts. Over on the right side, a few overlords are there. Fifth base still mining on that rich gas nicely for Maru. Hydras in a big arc trying to minimize the splash damage. They just don't have the numbers. He's just too outnumbered, mate. Attacking into siege up tanks with no spells available, with no banelings to clear the Hellbats. Without the numbers, I mean, we are just seeing the power of a mech player that has greater army supply and economy than you. Maru with a splendidly greedy opening, denies information, and then pushes forward. This was a beautiful build order, great execution by Maru and uh, Rainer, just being blindsided by Maru's tricks. He always says, you know, Rainer pulls out these weird, crazy build orders. That's part of why playing Maru's hard. He's not just the late game king. He's also a guy who has some of the trickiest early game in the books. Cyclone's taking out Overlords now as well. Obviously, Rainer not willing to give up, but he's done for. Abducting Cyclones never feels good. Cyclone Hellion taking some big damage. The army marching forward. Rainer is going to have to tap out any moment. He really does not have any more hope in there, son. Great way to snag game one in the best of three for Maru. Gets him with the greediest opening of all time into surprise battle mech. We have to give it to Maru. It wasn't just a good build order, but it was also the constant pretending that he was making stim. Over and over again, he kept tricking Rainer. Rainer came in with these Ling scouts. Look, he hit this Ling in the top left. He's already scouted stim. Cancels it. Another Zergling comes in. Maru instantly starts stim. No, that one he didn't start, and, and Rainer missed that. Or if he... I mean, he should have dropped a Hydra Den or something immediately. Once he... If he realized. But he just didn't seem to realize. And again, Stim starts just before the Zergling enters vision. He just kept tricking Rainer with that. And Rainer thought he was playing against Bio for far too long in this game. Great game one for Maru. All right, straight into game two. Rainer almost brought that one back. That was a terrible start. But honestly, he took a few really good surrounds. And if he didn't leave those Hydras out in the middle of the map so long... Because even before that, he was a bit too far forward on the map. Trying to like assert control and, and let the Cyclones take a few good trades. But then he left the rest of the Hydras just sitting there. And that really cost him big time. Maru's going to go Command Center first in map two. So Greed seems to be the name of the game. And uh, you know, it's not a bad way to play. Rainer's going Gas Pool. Ooh. 
gas pool can pay off big time against command center first if you do like a, a little link flood with like 16 zerglings when link speed finishes at about three minutes and five seconds three minutes and ten seconds but if you don't find big damage i mean you're doing a very delayed hatchery it doesn't go down till about a minute 20 and they're going command center first so the, the mixture of them doing the greediest opening you doing one of the safest ends up meaning that they will get ahead if you do not find damage Barracks not even in the wall off. That's interesting. Not only did he fake stim, remember Maru kept building marines one at a time for that whole early game. He built like 10 marines. Which really is not something you normally want to do when you play mech because they don't benefit from any upgrades. They don't scale well into the later stages of the game. But stim plus cyclone hellion is actually quite a common build over the last few months. And Maru really sold the story of that so very well. Yeah, like I say, you need to go Roaches, but honestly, the way Rainer played that game, he played good enough with the Lingbane into Hydra and his surrounds and his micro and his queens. He really did not need Roaches or Infestors. He could have done it with Hydra Lingbane into Vipers. And, and honestly, if he didn't lose those Hydras, he was about to get to Vipers. And, and if he if you've got a big enough army, anytime Maru tries to push, your Banelings clear the Hellions and Hellbats. And then your Vipers start abducting everything. But even without the Vipers, just having the Banelings to clear the Hellions and Hellbats means the Hydras beat the tanks. Like, Maru can defend choke points, but he can't really push into big open areas. So I, I actually feel like rainer has got to be spewing a little bit that he let that game slip away. On the other hand, Maru had a great opening. He's doing another... Super greedy opening, and Rain is trying to kill him. Oh, he's doing Ravager Ling. Guys, we are seeing a Ravager Ling all in against a Hellion Cyclone 3 CC by the looks of it. Into mech, I would imagine. It could be a bio transition. This is crazy fast from Rainer. And it's because Maru has no scouting. He's playing completely blind. I mean, this should be a counter to Maru's build, right? Unless he gets two Hellions into four Cyclones. And even then, how are you going to stop the Zerglings? Link speed's done. It's going to be six Roaches, which are mostly going to turn into Ravages, or at least as many as he can. So we have like two or three Ravages, mass Zergling. Maru has no idea it's coming. He has no wall off on the high ground. How the hell do you survive here? Luckily for him, he's building Cyclones by default. And luckily, he is sending those Hellions through the middle of the map to try and see this. The Roaches are going to group up. The Lings and the Roaches trying to jump on top. And Rainer morphing his uh, second Ravager there. It's only got one gas. It's a 21 drone Roachling all in. Super powerful. Great pullback to the high ground. Maru trying to build a bunker. His Cyclones are going to be ready just in time. Can Rainer bust up that ramp? Breaking the ramp is absolutely essential. He's got to get up there. And he's got to get up there fast. Already one Roach goes down. The Lings actually aggroed onto the command center for a moment. He's got to break this ramp. What are the Lings doing? I don't know why the Lings keep running away right now. I guess they're afraid of the two Hellions. But I think he has to kill the SCVs and get in there. I think Rainer is prioritizing the efficiency of the Lings not getting shot by the Hellions, but it just cost him all of his Roaches and Ravages. I think that was a misplay by Rainer. There are times where that makes sense, but he's lost all of his Ravages and Roaches. That's a disaster. Because once you lose your Roach Ravager, well, you need a full surround. Oh, he can't quite get it. The SCVs are body blocking. Nice hold position on the SCVs. Beautiful micro there by Maru. And he pulls them back. Hellion Cyclone survives, and that's game over. That's it. That's the best of three. It's in the bag, pretty much, uh, unless Rainer can do some magic. I mean, he is Rainer. Rainer and Dark, two of the best comeback players in the game. A lot of people, I get a regular comment, say, don't say it's over, Pig. I don't want to know that. It's a, it's a device I use, guys. What I'm saying is Maru is miles ahead. He's going stim and 1-1. One, one. Okay, the 1-1 one, one upgrades doesn't actually make any sense in this scenario because you actually want to spend your money on SCVs and Hellion production to both counter pressure and defend any future waves as well as get a second and third barracks but because his build order was meant to be super optimized towards a very early 2-2 upgrades he's doing it this way but that means you can see he's he's kind of supply blocked now and he's not got enough supply to build scvs hellions and everything at the same time so he's going to swap his factory around he is sending a little bit of a hellion poke across the map with the cyclone stay at home rainer's going for round two of the all-in which kind of makes sense i mean he's desperately behind you might as well go all in and just uh, first wave didn't work maybe the second wave will work maru doesn't have a bunker he doesn't seem to realize what's happening the roaches they, they, they've, they've hidden themselves 
Okay, he sees it. He sees it. Maru scans. He immediately pulls back to the high ground. He's starting to build bunkers, but it might be a little bit too late. Maru underestimating Rainer and thinking he wouldn't commit to another wave, but Rainer is he's in a corner. He had to commit. The Ling's trying to force himself up this ramp. They're getting good damage. Oh, he's breaching the ramp. But the Roaches are so far behind that it's actually a decent first hold there for Maru. One more Cyclone does go down, though. Two Cyclones and a pack of SCVs going down. He's got to get in before those bunkers finish, I believe, does Rainer. Rainer finds good damage, but he's still down 11 workers. Remember, he is so committed. The Roach Ravager going in. The Roach Ravager Ling trying to take out these SCVs. The SCVs need to pull back and repair the bunker, I believe. The bunker only has one Marine. There's no damage. There's no damage. There's two Marines spread across the bunkers and one Cyclone. Oh my lord. He's taking so much. Rainer is focus firing the SCVs. And that is absolutely huge. A tank does come out. But look at these biles. My lord, Maru is getting obliterated. Maru was so far ahead in this game. But he took every risk possible. And he's here with his 1-1 one, one Stim Marines that he has four of. He does take out the last Ravages. Maybe Rainer should have backed off a second earlier. But Rainer finds himself with double the work account. He's still got a mass of Lings rallying across the map. Rainer thought he was all in. He's realizing now, I guess I have to transition. He's going to take a third base and an Evo Chamber. Evo Chamber is a weird choice on such a small economy, but I guess he's got almost enough ga gas to start Carapace, so why not? Oh! Oh, round two! If the Lings can get on top of the tank, this could be big! But the 1-1 Stim Marines and that tank on the high ground actually wreck him. Rainer got a little bit antsy there, throws away a lot of Zerglings. That was a big mistake. Because remember, he has to drone non-stop. Luckily, the starport never started. If there was a medevac out and eight marines counter-dropping, he'd be in huge trouble. But he's got a carapace. He's building a third queen. A fourth queen starts as well. Can start rallying these drones to the third base. If he can get that third saturated, he should be able to build his economy. Remember, we've got triple mule dropping. Triple mule should be triple worker production right now. He is missing little bits of worker production because Maru's trying to squeeze everything in at once. Those first two medevacs are going to be huge. First medevac starts, second medevac starts. If he can get out a 16 marine drop, that is what needs to keep Rainer away from drones. The problem is I feel like Rainer's going to get to like 60 drones before that drop gets to his side of the map. And if you're playing against a 60 drone Rainer, ooh, that's tough. On the other hand, the 1-1 one -one upgrades are fantastic. He's going to go for armory off two barracks because he's like, well, I might as well start plus two attack at least. I kind of feel it for Maru, but on the other hand, like, like, like why he would want to do that. But on the other hand, I'm like, I don't know, man. I feel like nonstop worker production has to be the goal. He's missing so many workers in this game just to try and hit this double drop timing. And even now, he's still not building workers. Maru. He's spending his minerals on army and upgrades. He does not build workers nonstop. I mean, he needs to do big damage because Rain is on 54 workers. And uh, whilst his tech is way behind Rainer's, he's getting 1-1 upgrades. He's not that far behind. Zerglings and a Queen are ready. More Zerglings and a Roach coming over. Dropping into that. Not a good choice for Maru. He's going to lose two Marines instantly. Third Marine goes down. Fourth Marine goes down. Oh, 1-1's pretty good, though. The, the, the early trade sucked for him, but once he gets the Marines out... Okay, maybe it is worth it. The start of the fight looked bad. The end of the fight looks good. Doesn't want to lose the medevacs, though. Got to be careful. Does lose one of these medevacs. Oh, you do not want to lose this second one. I think overall, that's great for Rainer. Shutting this down is well worth it. He's rebuilding seven drones. He's back to mining. Maru kind of needed to do a lot to slow him down there. And whilst he did slow him down, that was just unnecessarily risky the way he threw those units away. He kind of... It was such a knife's edge judgment because if there was like two or three less Zerglings, maybe it would have worked out better for Maru. But losing three or four Marines at the start of the drop really is very costly. That being said, his upgrades are miles ahead. He will have more drops moving out in the near future as these new medevacs come out. Rainer's fourth is very delayed. Rainer's stuck massing units here on not that big an economy. He does start plus two carapace. He's trying to go baneling speed. This is the sort of game where I would have loved to see infestors. I think janky games, infestors become just amazing. But... I think for him, he's like, dude, I don't have gas for infestors. I don't have gas for burrow. What are you talking about, pig? He's not wrong. Three gas is all that he's on. It's a very heavy mineral style for Rainer, mostly Zerglings. And there'll be a few Banelings and Baneling Speed eventually sprinkled in. Zerglings take out one Marine. 
Maru saves the rest of them. Good trade for him. Fourth command center building. Reyna's going to need to really explode his hatchery count, his creep spread, and turn this into a normal macro game. And the thing is, the upgrades are just so far ahead for normal that as long as Maru starts taking tactically good trades and improves this unit's loss count, I could see him pulling out in the late game because it's just such an early fourth command center. He's got a second factory. He's keeping up worker production now, which I was critical of earlier, but he's been a bit better on it in the last little while. Queen's in the top, taking a bit of damage. Reyna with the transfuse though, will defend. Yep. Should be respreading a creep tumor up here. I'm surprised he's not doing that straight away. Rich gas base, infestation pit, baneling speed's almost done. He's building a few roaches, that's interesting. I think he just wants to have corrosive bile to deal with siege tanks. Zergling poking in. Zergling on the natural as well. Look at this guy's more barracks going down. Five barracks, two factories. Going to eight barracks now. Fourth command center on the way. Maru's playing for a proper macro game. Rainer, he's got a hive on the way. He's going up to 75 workers, but he's not at that 85. Like, you know when you see Rainer go straight to 85 workers? That's when Rainer is like, yeah, I'm playing a proper macro game right now. Feels like the adrenaline's still pumping. His heart's still thumping. He doesn't know if he's going to have to just mass army or die at any moment. Lots of Zerglings in the main should easily defend that drop. This hatchery will get cancelled, though. Immediate rebuild. Nice. Widowmine's starting to get mixed in for Maru. Reyna's going to have to be careful with that. Bile's good against individual Widowmines as well, so that's actually really cute. Oh, look at that. Instantly Bile's the Widowmine. Pulls back. And nice focus fire for Maru. Remember, Maru has 3-3 three, three on the way as well. Units lost tab getting better for him. He's up 1,200 resources. Ling's in the main, not in position. Ooh, Rainer a little slow on that. But doesn't matter because those Marines were not in a tight formation. So they do get surrounded and take big damage. Sporecrawler gets a few hits on the medevac as well. Burrow is on the way. Plus three carapace has started. Rainer on 84 work is now happy to start playing a macro game, but Maru's ready to multi-prong and Maru's already got a fifth command center on the way. Feels like Rainer maybe doesn't quite have the tools he's used to having at this stage of the game. Widow Mine's taken out by Biles. Nicely done. Ling surrounding the Marines on the south side. The Ling Bane, sorry. Going to try and potentially drop the main. Working this angle is great choice for Maru. Rainer has to turn around, but if you focus those Banes down, you can just maybe win this fight. No, it's a lot of Zerglings. He does still focus the Banes down, but he has to pick up and move. Sporkroll is still there. And the Maru has to back off. Ghost Academy's on the way. Concussive Shells is remembered. Now the Marauders are getting mixed in. That's a problem. Pure Ling Bane cannot deal with this, guys. He's got an Ultra Cavern started. Lurkers may have actually been the better choice in this game. Since there's only four Siege Tanks, it's mostly Widowmine production. Lurkers would have been really good for staving off the mid game. Oh, Bile trying to land here on the Widowmines. Nice. Both Widowmines do get taken down. They get some decent shots, though. In the south, Burrowed Banelings waiting for Maru. Oh, I wonder if those can land. Rainer. Oh, he gets scanned. Nicely done. Good move by Maru. Oh, the Lings aren't killing anything. 3-3 three, three versus 2-2. 3-3 two, two. Three, three versus 2-2. Two, two. The Marines just refuse to die. Oh, me, oh my. 3,000 resources lost difference. Those 3-3 three, three against 2-2 two, two upgrades working magic for Maru. Oh, he tries to drop on the ledge. There is actually a bang ledge on this map, guys. We don't see it used very much like that old one on whatever map it was that that used to be on. I'm trying to remember the name of that map. Oh, uh, it was a real turtley map. Not glittering ashes, but it was kind of volcano-y in some regards. Oh, I'll remember it later. Back in the old turtle meta a few years ago. Lots of late games on those maps. Bio split on both sides. Plus two vehicle platings on the way. Building armor coming in as well. Vehicle plating plus building armor. Those late game upgrades for Maru. He's looking for efficiency. Rainer's still just on mostly Ling Bane with a couple Vipers that have only just joined the fray. Queen's coming forward. Marauder's really tough to deal with. Massling counterattack. Massling counterattack. But half of his army's nearby. 
Siege tanks in the south do get jumped on in the north. Looks like those lings will get cleaned up. They'll take out a few barracks. He does tear down the depot and get into the natural, which is nice. Oh, no wall off in the main as well. Good moves for Rainer, but he's got to use Burrow to be as annoying as possible here. He's going to put lings in the main, lings in the natural, starting to get good SCV damage. And Rainer finally starting to cause a mess in Maru's production. 13 SCVs go down. These lings not burrowing. Not quite as good on the multitasking as he maybe could have been. He's got to watch out for that Widow Mine as well. Nice defuse there. Only takes out three Zerglings. Ultras are on the way. So it's Ultra Ling Bane Viper, but there's already Ghosts and masses of Marauders. Oh, I don't know. I feel like we need Spellcasters really badly. I think if Rainer has Infestors and Vipers, he can maybe play a late game. But right now, it looks like he's just trying to smash with a pretty low tier army. If he can catch Maru out of position, it can work, but that is a big if. Big army in the north, not being contested. Rainer's just sending giant Ling Run buys again. Okay, it's not a bad call. We'll see if it works. Nice reaction with the stim. No overseer here, so the cloak ghosts will cause problems. The marines finally getting broken. The barracks starting to go down in the south side. Oh me, oh my. Rainer's Banelings getting massive hits. Oh, but they're actually not blowing up. The ultra does go down as well. Great focus fire. Ling Bane in the north goes up. Maru takes big Baneling hits, but he takes out a hatchery in the north. He will take out a hatchery in the south as well. Oh me, oh my. In the main base, his production starts to get torn up. Rainer finds good damage, but losing two of his most important hatcheries at the same time. That stings. And he's in big trouble now. Burrowing Zerglings around the base. Good move. Forcing scans out. Not actually having the units on the left to kill these two. Could cause a nuisance later. Overlord randomly rallies in and dies. And the Ling's coming forward. Looks like Rainer is going to maybe look to bust a command center. He finds the one in the south. Instant cancel on the planetary morph and a lift off. Ultra Ling Roach Ravager. I think you'd like to kill a base, but without Banelings, I don't think you can do that. I think Rainer needs to just rebuild these hatcheries, try to secure these middle ones that he's going for now, keep borrowing Zerglings, keep doing Ling run buys, use your multi-prong. This base, usually a weak spot. Lings will take that siege tank out very quickly. The Widow Mines could do a lot of friendly fire here as well. Decent shot to the south. SCVs are falling though. At the same time, Lings on the south getting taken out. Ultra's trying to run in on top of that rich gas base. Oh, if, if he gets an Ultra in the mineral line, it could be big. Oh, he's got to get an Ultra in the mineral line to kill the repairing SCVs. Oh no! Rainer overcommitting, not able to take it out. That is a big mistake. If he got Ultras in the mineral lines, he could have killed all the repairing SCVs, killed it a lot quicker, and taken out the SCVs. He's still got Lings up on that third base, though. Rainer getting some damage done, but he's got to be careful because these Ultras are exposed. Trying to do it with Ultras, Zerglings, Ravagers, Vipers, and Momentum. But Maru hangs on. He takes damage, but he's not dead. He's got how many orbitals? Only three! And he's only on 55 workers. Maru's in trouble, man. Maru's economy is not as set up as I thought it was. I thought he was on like seven command centers. He's only on three orbitals. I mean, if Rainer can just defend the drops, get another one of these attacks in the north, blow up the southern base, it's going to be really hard. He's got corruptors and infestors on the way, exactly the tools he needs. Rainer playing a fantastic game. This is such a scrappy one. Remember, this started with a failed all-in from Rainer into a second round that caught Maru off guard. Widow Mind Drop goes in here. Is going to get some decent hits. Oh my god, decent. May not be a strong enough word as two Widow Mines up the top took out a whole bunch as well. Six workers going down in that base. Nice snipes going down. The Ultra is tanking a few of those shots. There are only four queens left. Not many transfusers left in this game. Ultras in the south did deny that planetary, which is important. But Maru's back to 66 workers. He's still got a big, efficient army. Right now, he's been trading at 6,000 resources more efficient. Bio Mine Liberator in the north. Rainer wisely gives up that base, but not before another Widow Mine takes out a pack of drones. 68 workers only for Rainer. He's got five infestors coming out. He's going to need to spread those all around the map. Something we know Serral is the god of that. How good is Rainer at that these days? Remember that Rainer prefers to win games without infestors. He always has. Whereas Serral has been using Infestors for the last four or five years, pretty much non-stop. Ultra's getting big snipes on him. Those Lings need to get out of here. Rainer trying to fight with pure Zergling. Not a good idea, man. Takes big damage. He's going to go around to counterattack that base. That's a good idea. Another hatchery snipe for Maru, taking these middle bases and near impossibility for, uh, for Rainer in this game. Maru's just not letting him hang on to them. And the efficiency is starting to get out of control now. 9,000 resources ahead and the units lost. Ling run by goes in, drags the Widow Mines into the SCVs. That's a good run by. 
I would have loved to see him take this factory out by now as well. Having an Overseer with these runbys can really help you with that. Clear those Widow Mines so they're not firing over and over. Oh, Fungal Ambush in the middle! Nice catch there. But Rainer's got to be careful. Those Infestors are mighty clumped. One good EMP in the middle. You don't have any Infestors left. And not only that, look at the supply. Look at the money. Even though Maru's economy wasn't that great, he's now got this base established. He's got this base established. If you don't do something about this, you're screwed. And look at the value. This Liberator up on 24 kills. He just runs the SCVs away, lets the Liberator do its magic, brings some ghosts over, and those Lings just die. Super efficient for Maru in this game. He's back on 62 workers, which might not seem like a lot, but it's enough because Raynor cannot get those middle bases. And as long as Rainer doesn't mind the middle bases, Rainer's bases are starting to run a little low. This base in the south being the freshest. Top two not looking so great. Rainer is ahead in the mineral income for now. But he needs to be ahead in the mineral income due to the efficiency once again. Efficiency, that's what I'm talking about. Liberator in the south, 28 kills. It's just massacring these Zerglings. And even though they get a few SCVs, without the Corruptors coming in to clear the Liberator, that is a problem. That being said, there are seven Corruptors now on the map, four Infestors, two Vipers. This is a very good late game army for Raynor. He's got the Anti-Liberator. He's got the Infestors that can stop the units from retreating. The Vipers with the Parasitic Bombs. Here we go! He's going to go for it, but does have to spread against the Widow Mine. Infestor is very close to the Bio. It does get a Fungal off. Insta-Fungal. But look at how many ghosts there are on the right, sniping down those Ultras. Another Infestor Fungal comes down, but Maru's army makes mincemeat the zerg was a bit too stuck behind each other all coming through almost like a semi choke point here because this terrain on the bottom was blocking them and there wasn't enough fungals to interrupt the snipes which means the ultras fall too quickly there wasn't a lot of banelings either if you don't have banelings you rely on ultras to get on top of those ghosts the ultras getting sniped was a deal breaker Rainer's fight goes very poorly he's now down 11,000 resources in the units lost he's gonna run in here again but i don't know what you want to call this guys um, what are they? Okay. The, the, what do the Americans call the, the the big C-130 that you get to play in the COD campaign that has howitzers in it and stuff? The Flying Fortress? Is that it? Whatever its name is, that is the name of that Liberator. Big Fungals! Oh my god, the Infestors get taken out! The Ultras taking an amazing fight! But he's got so few units behind and doesn't even have an Overseer to reveal the units. The last Infestors go in and that is absolutely brutal. The Corruptor Viper there... Oh, me, oh my. There's just not enough for Zerg, man. Maru playing with fantastic upgrades and looking like an absolute beast. Oh, the Widow Mine's there. Do fire. A couple of those Zerglings do get taken out. There's just not enough for Rainer. He's got no income now. His income, less than his opponent's. His base is running dry. He's lost his Purple Gas base, even though the Purple Gas is mined out. And Maru, of course, has more income. Fresh minerals on a few of those patches. Reasonably fresh minerals. Still got minerals there. And he's getting a planetary up in the south. Maru has a massive income advantage. And Rainer is, of course, searching for extreme efficiency with the dregs of a Zerg setup. It's the B-52 Strata Fortress, some people say. Codename Hercules. I think Hercules is just the codename for a B-52 in transport configuration, isn't it? Or something like that. Isn't that just what they call that? A Hercules transport? I don't think that's like the special name for the one that's loaded with guns, is it? I, I could be wrong. Um, apparently there's a Hercules helicopter as well. AC-130 gunship. Spooky? Spooky's the nickname I was thinking of. That's it. Spooky's the one I was looking at. B-52 is not a Hercules. Yeah, I'm getting my names confused. It's been a long time since I looked at any uh, military stuff. I used to be into that as a kid. Um, it's the AC-130. Spooky is its nickname. Spectre. Yeah. Nice. Spectre is the, the shooty name, whereas C-130 is the cargo version. Ah, thank you, everyone. The Spectre gunship. That is like the funniest plane of all time. Ooh, nice scan catches the Infestor. That Infestor goes down as well. I mean, Rain is desperately trying to set up ambushes, but he's got half the army supply. Zerg's meant to swarm, but right now Maru's the one doing the swarming. And Rainer has to tap out at the end of an epic game one. <sighs> You know what, guys? Watching this series now, after hearing Maru's interview where he says he was kind of lucky to get as far as he did in the tournament, I think we can see why. He shut down the first wave so well. He was in such a good position. But there was some questionable play. He shut down such a fast all-in. 
And I get you have double engineering bait and it feels like going 1-1's the right thing to do because you'd already invested in it. But it was absolutely the wrong decision. And it made this game so much harder than it needed to be. Not walling off his base, I think also made things much harder than it needed to be as well, if we think about it, right? I mean, not having the add-on exposed was pretty nice, though. That kind of helped, because he still had the reactor up. But here at this point, choosing to go 1-1 upgrades and then missing tons of worker production. I really feel like workers, army, workers, army, and get a scout out on the map to check what's going on have to be your highest priorities. But uh, it, he was repairing his aliens, he was going 1-1 upgrades, and because the factory was idling, he didn't have as many units as he definitely could have. Maru did have uh, a bit of a rough condition at some moments in this tournament, but he just showed this great ability to do Maru things and make comebacks from bad positions. Like, this supply block was really nasty as well, right? But uh, great job for Raynor to hide it. If those aliens ran up that ramp and saw that roach, he immediately starts building bunkers and he's completely fine. If he just builds bunkers and marines and gets those bunkers loaded, he's fine. And this was a bit of a mistake here as well by Maru. Because look at this little thing where he lets the lings up the ramp. I mean, we thought Reyna was dead. I said it was basically game over after the first all-in fail. But those lings push up and Maru should have held position rather than panic pulling back. I think he made a big mistake here. I'm going to show you guys exactly what Maru did wrong there, which he, he kind of will regret in hindsight. Here, he just needs to pull back onto the ramp and quickly hold position right now. Hold position and then just shuffle these units so you've got two Cyclones solid on the ramp. One of the big problems he made is he's F2-ing. If the Marines weren't, were just staying on the high ground, his Cyclones would be moving a lot smoother because they're faster than the Marines. And if you just have two Cyclones on hold position, basically four Zerglings attack that at a time, you start repairing those two Cyclones, you're completely good until the Roach Ravager gets here. He thought he could get the SCVs in front to block on hold position in time. Problem, he doesn't get those up in time, which means the Zerglings are now kind of wrapping around the Cyclone at the front. And he's still trying to get that Cyclone out of there, but he can't. So he has to just fight with the SCVs. But now look how much surface area these Zerglings have. Instead of four or three Zerglings fighting at a time, he's fighting with six Zerglings at a time, which is way higher damage. Way higher damage. And breaking a Cyclone or two here. Yeah, two Cyclones going down, as well as killing some Marines. Yeah, remember, there was three Marines. There'd be four or five by now. Oh, he's building a reactor. There'd be three Marines in a bunker. Instead, he only gets one Marine in a bunker, which is a huge difference in terms of the firepower during this part of the fight, where he loses almost all of his SCVs. At the end of the day, Maru made a clutch comeback. He still played a fantastic series. But I think Raynor was like, counting his blessings at this point, going, I can't believe this second wave is doing as much damage as it is. Because he was so committed on the first wave, Maru could afford to take so many safety precautions, but Maru played so greedy, just assuming Raynor wasn't going to come for another wave and that Raynor was droning up, and it punished him big time. At the end of the day, Maru gets a 2-0. He wins even when things go bad, and that's a big part of what makes a great StarCraft player. You make bad mistakes. Things, Unexpected things happen. Are you able to still find a way to win the game, to keep your cool, to not get mad at yourself over those mistakes and be stuck in the past, but to just go, I know what I need to do from now to win this game. And I feel like Maru did that really well. So GG well played, once again impressive, but we can definitely say maybe his condition overall at this tournament wasn't quite the best. The loss to Cyan, this, what could have been a, a, a loss to Maru, to Rainer, sorry, but clever build game one and clutch in the end in game two. So GG to Maru and hats off to him for playing so well.